Robots can help the disabled. Um, this is a guy named Henry Evans who lives in uh, Los Altos, near Palo Alto. Um, he was a CFO of a Silicon Valley company until he was 40 when he had a brainstem stroke. And now you can see he has to be fed by his wife. His wife takes care of him. He can communicate by moving his head around. She's actually reading off of an acrylic board, to the word. He can also use his head to control a mouse, so he can use an on-screen keyboard. Um, he's able to write emails. I sometimes chat with him in the evenings. Um, he can click with his, with his hand after a lot of physical therapy, so he's, he's quadriplegic. He saw this video on CNN. That's one of our robots with Charlie Kemp from Georgia Tech, and contacted both Georgia Tech and us to start this project that we call Robots for Humanity. So in this video, you can see this is Henry's interface, and there's him, him using the interface to make the robot move. He's controlling, he's basically giving it commands um, through a web interface and telling the robot to bring its, uh, its hand near his face. Now this is scary to us. The first thing he wants to do is bring the robot's hand near his face. Why? Because he's got itches and he can't scratch them, right? For 10 years he can't scratch an itch and suddenly he, this is the first thing he wants to do. The next thing he wants to do is shave himself. We actually measured the force that he uses to shave himself and we measured the force that his wife uses to shave him with the force torque sensor and found out that he's like 10 times harder and that's probably why he doesn't like her shaving him. Um, but he had a great time, and if you watch his face, you can see the, the smile on it as he gets here. I mean, he's really, he's like, this is great. Um, the other thing he can do is use the autonomous capabilities, um, so he can direct the robot to go to another place and then empty something. One of the things that he's one of these, these people who likes his house to be really neat, and when he was healthy, he would pick up things as he went down the house and try to keep it tidy. And now he's pushed down the hallway in his house. He can see the mess, but he can't do anything about it. Right? And he hopes that with the robot, he'll be able to actually pick up some of those things. So this is basically giving back a body to somebody who's lost their body. They're kind of locked inside their head and can do a lot of things. Um, and, and this, I'm, I'm really excited about this work, as you can probably tell. I think this um, sets a, a, a course for a, a direction in robotics. It's not, again, a really great business, right? The market is small, but it's a really important place because it's a place where Anything else that a robot can do for you, you probably can do for yourself. Um, module of the memory thing. And, um, but in this case, it's something that, that's much bigger. Um, this is something that's going to be completely life-changing to him.